Good evening. Well, that's a tough act to follow, especially since I didn't have t-shirts made for the occasion. So, my name's Yvonne Bombard, and I have the distinct pleasure of introducing this Advocacy Award. This award was actually just created last year by the Society to honor individuals or groups of individuals who have exhibited excellence and achievement in promoting the science of human genetics and its application for the common good. Bev Haim Myers of the Canadian Coalition for Genetic Fairness and Senator James Cowan, both of whom I've nominated for this award, could not have been more deserving for their leadership in protecting Canadians from genetic discrimination. Genetic discrimination, as I'm sure if many of you can attest, remains a fundamental barrier for patients in accessing clin clinical genetic testing and in participating in genomic research, both of which have ripple effects on impacting their healthcare decisions and in stifling our quest in advancing genomic medicine. Unfortunately, Canada remains one of the few industrialized countries in the world that does not have specific protections in place to protect its citizens against genetic discrimination. But Bev and Senator Cowan have been working to end this with Bill S-201. This is the first bill to advance this far in the legislative process in Canada and provides the most comprehensive protection against genetic discrimination to date. I first met Bev on Queen's Park at a press conference announcing a private member's bill on genetic discrimination. And here we are on Parliament Hill supporting Bill S-201, and it's lovely to come full circle here to commemorate both Bev and Senator Cowan's efforts here now. I've had the pleasure of working with Bev and Senator Cowan in my roles both as a steering committee member on the Canadian Coalition for Genetic Fairness and as an expert witness providing testimony at, Senator, at Senate committee hearings informing policy and their deliberations with my evidence-based research, having led Canada's first national study on genetic discrimination. I've watched Bev over the past seven years champion our community of advocates across the country and represent the patient voice with poise and determination in her role as chair of the Canadian Coalition for Genetic Fairness. Bev, ASHG honors your leadership and is grateful to the Canadian Coalition for Genetic Fairness for advocating on the, for the passage of this bill on our behalf to protect Canadians finally from genetic discrimination. Please accept our award and our gratitude. Thank you, Yvonne, that was very generous. In 2008, the Global Genome Project was well underway. Other jurisdictions, including the UK, the EU, the United States, implemented genetic information protection. Canada decided to take a wait and see approach. Nothing has been implemented and Canada continues to stay anchored in that thought process. To date, as Yvonne has already mentioned, there is no explicit protection for genetic test information, even though we are fortunate enough to be at a time in science where genetic discoveries promise to transform medicine through disease prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. In 2008, a Huntington disease researcher approached our board and expressed concern that in Canada, genetic discrimination would prevent people from coming forward to participate in clinical trials. Dr. Bombard's research validated that 86% of individuals are afraid of genetic discrimination, and of those, 40% have experienced it. With the prospect of human studies, human clinical trials on the horizon, this was incredibly problematic for the HD community and many others. The Canadian Coalition for Genetic Fairness was created and led by the Huntington Society of Canada. 20 organizations are members. 
20 organizations and communities that experience genetic discrimination on a daily basis, including individuals from Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, ALS, Tourette's, and many others. I'd like to share some of the stories with you. Parents expecting their second child. The mom lived a very healthy, active lifestyle, but she was denied life insurance because she carried the gene for retinitis pigmentosa. Her husband was also denied life insurance because he had a predisposition to celiac disease. A young mom, also expecting her second child, was approved for life insurance. Before she received policy, she found out that her own mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, was tested and carried the BRCA gene. This young mom let her broker know, her insurance broker know, that she too wanted to be tested for the BRCA gene. She wanted to take control and proactively understand what she could do for her life going forward. Her life insurance was rescinded. A graduating chiropractor applied for life insurance so that she could start her career. She was denied because she was from an HD family. And until she could prove through a genetic test that she did not have the mutation for Huntington disease, she would not be considered for life insurance. She reluctantly got the genetic test. She luckily does not have the HD mutation. She got a little bit of life insurance, but not what she was asking for. And five years later, she had the opportunity to be part of the practice. She applied again to increase her life insurance so that she could be part of the practice. They came back to her and said, you need to have another genetic test. We need to know that you still do not have the mutation for Huntington disease. Clearly, it's in the wrong hands if the insurers have genetic information in their hands. In Toronto, Ontario, a landlord of a supportive housing site has been asking tenants to provide health information, including genetic test information. This landlord is withholding privileges in this home until he gets that information. It's not quite clear why he wants this information or what he's going to do with it, but it does set a frightening precedent. A gentleman from Ottawa in his 50s was recently diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. He would like to participate in clinical trials, which would necessi necessitate a genetic test prior to participation. His children, in their 20s, are furious. They're furious that he's even considering getting a genetic test. They're furious that he doesn't understand how it's going to impact them. This has created division and tension in the family at a time when he needs the support of his children. Genetic discrimination is real in Canada and becoming more prevalent every day. Employers are adding genetic testing options to benefit plans and are asking for guidance on how to interpret genetic information for their own benefit. In 2012, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner commissioned two studies by third parties to look at the economic and actuarial impact on the insurance industry if they did not have access to genetic test information. These studies concluded that it would not have significant adverse impact on the viability of the life and health insurance industry if they did not have access to genetic test information. They did, however, acknowledge that this may need to be revisited periodically given rapid positive change to medical technology. However, the UK has protected genetic test information since 1995. And research indicates that insurance has not been unfavorably impacted. In fact, in the 2014 UK Insurance Key Facts Report produced by the Association of British in, in, uh, Insurers, it states that the insurance industry in the UK is a success story. The Canadian Human Rights Commission have long supported adding genetic characteristics to our Human Rights Act and support a robust protection of genetic test information. They clearly agree that genetic discrimination is a human rights issue, and they look forward to facilitating opportunities for a dialogue going forward with provincial rights commissions regarding genetic test protection.
Many have stood beside us in this fight, including ASHG, who recently published a policy statement supporting Bill S-201 in our quest to protect genetic test information. We would not be where we are without the support of informed, knowledgeable experts and courageous individuals who are sharing their genetic discrimination stories. We are closer to robust genetic information protection in Canada than we have ever been, largely due to Senator Cowan and his staff for their tireless work on three adaptations of Bill S-201 and three years of hard work. Our work is not finished. We still need your help. For all the Canadians in the room, we need you to contact your MPs and to contact the ministers in our government, and our federal government, and let them know that you support Bill S-201 and that you expect them to support it as well. We'll make it easy for you. After this conference in the next couple of weeks, you will receive a letter. That letter will be addressed to, to our ministers, and it will show your support for Bill S-201. We ask you to please sign that letter and send it back to us so that we can share that. We are on a timeline here. Bill S-201 is moving forward, but we need to get more information to our government. So please, if you do nothing else, sign it and get it back to us. Please let our government know that Canada needs to protect genetic information, and by not doing so, we are paralyzing science and medicine going forward. Thank you to ASHG for showing our government that the world is watching and for recognizing the Canadian Coalition for Genetic Fairness for our role in this important advocacy effort. As chair of the Canadian Coalition for Genetic Fairness, it is an honor to receive the ASHG Advocacy Award. On behalf of the coalition and all people who are impacted or will be impacted by genetic discrimination in Canada, thank you.